All right, so this part of the video, we are going to be talking about instrumentation. So here is my skin. Forceps, these are forceps, these are rat tooth forceps. You grab like a pencil. So you have control, more fine control motor skills like that. Here, let's see what kind of grasp. Like so, a piece of the fatty skin. Okay, so like that, between your middle finger, index finger, and thumb, like so. So these are forceps, and that's how you grasp those. The next thing we're going to talk about is scalpel. The scalpel you grab like a violin, like so, so you can have nice, even, controlled pressure throughout. A common mistake is to grab like this because then you are only using the tip and not the full blade. So this you use like so, like a violin handle. So you can have nice even pressure throughout with the whole blade. So this is a scalpel, see the tip. This is a hemostat, little mosquito hemostat. And the way you grab this is you use um, this finger your ring finger and your thumb with your index finger to stabilize it so you can easily pronate and supination rotate with the tip. You can have stable so when you need to go in and grasp and you just use a little bit of pressure like so and click more and click. That's a hemostat. Um, scissors, you grab the same way with your index finger stabilizing with your ring finger and your thumb through the holes like so, so you can have complete stabilization and you can go in like this or like that. And then when you go in, rotate and snip the suture which I will show when I am suturing my skin. Needle driver, which this isn't really a needle driver, but it's pretending it's a needle driver. Um, you grab the same way. Like so, so you can have stability with your ring finger and your thumb with this for stabilization. So you can go in. Grab the needle, click, and drag out. Unclick, grab, which I will show more use when I am suturing. All right, that is instrumentation, proper use, and what they are. We'll see you in the next clip. Okay, so we're gonna do a two-handed knot. So what you're gonna do is you make sure that you cross them first, and with your uh, index finger and your thumb, you're going to grab a hold of the other side of the suture, pull it through once, now your hands will be crossed as you place it down, and then from here you want to loop it with your thumb, here, like I have it around my thumb, and you're going to bring the other one across to create a loop. Now with your index finger and your thumb, you're going to grasp the other suture, bring it through the loop, and as you go down, you are going to cross. And you just repeat that. You loop it with your thumb, make your loop, go through, bring it through, and as you go down, you make sure that you're crossing so they're nice, stable knots. So that's two, through your thumb, make your loop, bring it through, Cross down, make your thumb loop, bring it over, go through, your thumb loop, over, bring it through. Loop, thumb, cross, it over. See how they're nice and stable knots? And you do your thumb loop, 
loop it across with this one, bring the suture through, cross over, thumb loop, suture, pass index finger and thumb over. As you can see, I'm grabbing it here. Grab it and pull it down. Thumb loop, other side of suture, make the loop, bring it through, down, thumb loop, bring the other one over, grasp with your thumb and index finger to pull them through the loop as you're bringing them, cross your hands, switch suture, thumb loop, loop like that, bring this one across, thumb forefinger, grasp it, the other side, and bring it down, thumb, loop with suture, grasp, here it is, we're going to grab it opposite, these gloves are really big, <laughs> get my gloves stuck in there, loop, bring it through, and go down. Loop, grab it through, and go down. One more. All right. There is our little row of knots. See you in the next clip. Okay, so in this video, we're gonna be doing a double-handed surgeon's knot, which is a variation of the uh, two-handed square knot. Um, but the first throw is different. So what you're gonna do is start the same way as the other one, where you're gonna cross um, the suture over. But instead of bringing it um, once through, you're gonna bring it twice. I'm just trying to get it situated. So you're gonna cross. When you get here, you're going to put your thumb through the suture and you're gonna grab it once. You're gonna put your thumb through again. Okay, grab it once. Sorry, my gloves are, my little thumb fingers are getting in the way. Grab it once through, and then you bring your thumb over and bring the suture, grab a spit with your thumb and your index finger so it went twice through, and you secure it down. And the rest of the throws are the same. You loop it through your finger, make the loop, and then remember to cross when you're going down. And it's important that when every time you're um, placing a knot down that you um, keep your fingers close to the knot. So you're ensuring, um, you know, you're securing it, but you're not strangulating it. So that's two, bring it through, make sure you cross the suture, you bring it down. You loop your thumb, bring it across, Put your index finger and your thumb to grasp the other suture. And as I do it here, I always cross it and then bring my two index fingers close to the knot. So bring it with your thumb, cross like this, make the loop with the other suture, bring it through, grasp the suture in your right hand, cross them so now they're opposite and you bring it down so you're going to loop it in your thumb bring it this way put it through and as I'm going I'm doing the switcheroo right there when I'm doing the knot and securing it like so bringing it down crossing and tie and loop here, grasping it, switching hands to cross, then you loop it, 
across it here, bring it through, and then you're gonna cross with it here, and cross, loop it in your thumb, bring it here, put your index finger and your thumb through the loop to grasp it, and cross. Couple more. Cross, finger, loop, bring it through, and cross. And there you go. Two handed surgeon knot. Just that first one, you bring it twice through to secure it from slipping, and then all the other throws are just single pass. There you go. See in the next clip. Okay, so in this video, we're going to be doing a double-handed surgeon's knot, which is a variation of the uh, two-handed square knot, um, but the first throw is different. So what you're going to do is start the same way as the other one, where you're going to cross um, the suture over, but instead of bringing it um, once through, you're going to bring it twice. I'm just trying to get it situated. So you're going to cross, when you get here, you're going to put your thumb through the suture and you're going to grab it once, you're going to put your thumb through again, okay, grab it once, sorry my gloves are, my little thumb fingers are getting in the way. Grab it once through, and then you bring your thumb over and bring the suture. Grab a spit with your thumb and your index finger so it went twice through, and you secure it down. And the rest of the throws are the same. You loop it through your finger, make the loop, and then remember to cross when you're going down. And it's important that when every time you're um, placing a knot down that you um, keep your fingers close to the knot. So you're ensuring, um, you know, you're securing it, but you're not strangulating it. So that's two, bring it through, make sure you cross the suture, you bring it down. You loop your thumb, bring it across, put your index finger and your thumb to grasp the other suture. And as I do it here, I always cross it and then bring my two index fingers close to the knot. So bring it with your thumb, cross like this, make the loop with the other suture, bring it through, grasp the suture in your right hand, cross them so now they're opposite and you bring it down so you're going to loop it in your thumb bring it this way put it through and as I'm going I'm doing the switcheroo right there when I'm doing the knot and securing it like so bring it down crossing and tie and loop here, grasping it, switching hands to cross, then you loop it, cross it here, bring it through, and then you're gonna cross, loop it here, and cross, loop it in your thumb, bring it here. Put your index finger and your thumb through the loop to grasp it, and cross. Couple more. Cross, finger, loop, bring it through, and cross. And there you go. 
two-handed surgeon knot. Just that first one, you bring it twice through to secure it from slipping, and then all the other throws are just single pass. There you go. See you in the next clip. Okay, so this one-handed knot tying, I'm gonna do it grasping with my left hand. Um, I got string colors just like in the video because my brain can grasp the concept like that and I don't know that I can show it with just suture. Um, good enough to where you can see it in video. I will try that after I do this, but I just wanted you to see that I could grasp the concept of doing it. So um, this is gonna be my stable hand um, and this is gonna be my working hand, my right hand. So I'm going to loop it around uh, grasping it with my middle finger and my thumb, but it's gonna be looped around my index finger. Okay, and you're gonna go against the other one. You're gonna flick it like that, make the knot. And as you're tying it down, you're gonna cross your hands. So now this hand is on top. And as you're doing that, you're gonna rotate this hand, which is my right. Sorry, it's string, it's not, or ribbon, I guess. Um, so as you turn it like that, you're gonna use these two fingers, my middle finger and my whatever fingers <laughs> next to that one. Um, and you're gonna bring it across and you're gonna bring the suture through the middle like that. And you're gonna bring it down, okay? So again, index finger comes through like this. You're going to flick it. Sorry, it's not as taut as um, suture, I'm going to flick it in between, you're going to cross, turn it all the way through, and as I'm going here, I am turning, putting this over the loop across, so I can grab this through, and it slipped out of my hands, and you push down, so again, looping with your index finger, like that, flicking your index finger across to make the knot. It's coming up like that. Then you cross your hands as I flip this hand and I'm using those fingers, bring this across the loop. And bring it across, bring it through and then go down. Okay, then again, I'm using this one Bring it across my index finger, looping it across like so. You make the knot, you cross your hands, and then you flip. Bring this across the loop. And this. so this is just my working hand. So bring it across your index finger to make the loop. Do the knot, go like that, cross over. Flip. My string is getting very short. Bring it across the loop. Grasp it with my middle finger to bring it through and go down. Okay, so this one hasn't moved. This one's not moving. This is my working hand. Index finger. Bring it close. Flick it through. See how I grabbed it there? You're flicking it, but you are turning and crossing. So when you bring this one across the loop, you bring it through and you go down. I don't know if you can see that. I will try it with suture in just a minute, but my brain was getting confused with the colors. So, oh, see, I almost did it again. So I need to remember to cross and then flip. So I bring this across the loop and I bring it through like so. And then this, bring it through flick it, it's getting very short, cross, flip this, bring this across the loop, and like so. So please hold while I cut this. My beautiful colored knots. I might be able to edit this out. I don't know. Sorry, Rob. <laughs> okay, I'm going to grab my 2-0 silk. Get 
excited about hapsy waysies. Okay, this is going to be my stable hand. I'm going to grab it on my index finger, go like this, grab the other side, loop it through, go down. As I go down, I turn this hand around and just adjust this across my loop. Oh, this one's really long. And then flick this through. Maybe I should have cut it a little bit. Okay, this is the hand I'm working with. Bring it around like so. Pull through, cross my hands, flip over here, put them between those fingers, use those fingers to bring it through. And I'm just using the one hand to go down. And then again, index finger going around, making that loop, crossing over. This is three crossings. Okay, we are still on the one-handed knot. So you loop it through, grasp it, and turn. Flip my hand here, put it across the loop. Get it through. Push. Grasp it around my index finger. Pull. With these big gloves and the suture is really hard to grab, but making do. So putting it across my loop using my middle finger, to see that middle finger and other one to bring it through. So grasping, pulling it through, crossing, bring it across the loop. prettier on my ribbons but you get the idea like this bring it across the loop between my middle finger I hope my editing skills are good because I got another dang call okay so once our suture is properly loaded onto the needle driver like so we're going to start and grab our forceps in our other hand we're going to grasp our tissue and we are going to place our first bite, describing the dermis and the epidermis, no fat. You're gonna angle it through. Once it's through, hopefully this is showing focus right there. You're going to grasp the needle. These rat teeth are not the best. You're going to readjust your needle driver and then go ahead and make your other bite it's really important to have um, your interrupted sutures evenly placed to hold the wound closed properly. Okay, so once you do that, I'm going to readjust my needle driver like so. I'm going to pull through. Make sure there's not ruining the tissue. Okay, that's how long I want my tail. So what I'm going to do is loop twice through like that with the suture. Grab the end like so. Pinch, pulling through while crossing, doing it Again, loop through, crossing this way, that's 
We secured the knot and then we did our one throw. So we're gonna do it again, because we need to do two. Just loop around once the needle driver, grab the tail and across like so. So that was two throws. And we are going to then grab our scissors like so. We are going to hold this up and I'm going to turn our suture and snip. We have them nice size. And then we just continue through. So I believe I have to do 10. So we will do one, two, four, six, eight, ten. Oh, perfect. It made the right amount of dots to go through. Where is my needle driver? Bad surgeon. Okay. So we are going to adjust our needle properly. Suture out of the way. Grab my forceps correctly. Grab our tissue. And again, take a bite, making sure not to grab the fat. Readjusting my needle driver, taking a bite parallel to the other side, adjusting again, pulling through. Pull, pull, pull the suture. And then, let's see, we're gonna make both loops grasp the tail and pull through. Make sure that you are crossing your hands so it makes the proper um, square knot. So then when I bring it back through the opposite way, it, um, I need one more to make that two. So when I make it, bring it the opposite way, it, um, makes a square knot. If you don't cross your hands, then it won't make it appropriately. And then my scissors again, about yay high. And we have two. Okay, now we're going to do that a couple more times. So let me grasp my needle, adjust it correctly, grab my forceps, Get the tissue out of the way. One bite, bring it through. Just my needle driver on my needle. Take another bite here. Grasp with my forceps. Readjust, oops. Readjust my force, my um, needle driver. Pull it through to the desired tail length. Then we are going to loop it twice to make a surgeon's knot. Crossing opposite. And then looping the suture again. Oops, like that around the needle driver. Crossing opposite side. And one more time to make that two throws. We got two more times. I'm gonna hold them up, my scissors, turn slightly, and cut. Get rid of my little tails, grab my needle driver again, and we are going to adjust my needle how I need it. Make my first bite, oh, put on my forceps. Remember, surgeons need two things in their hands at all times and adjust it, oh, it came through. I'm sure human tissue is a little bit more, less buttery. This is like going through butter. It cut really easily, which is awesome. Not too much pressure. Adjust my needle correctly to pull it through. Want my tail about that long. And then we are going to do two loops Bring it through, crossing, looping one more time, crossing opposite sides, 
another loop through, grabbing it, and one more cross. Pulling up, grabbing the scissors, and cutting. Last one for this technique. I wish I had smaller gloves. I think I'd be better. If I had an actual meter driver, that would be awesome. And then missing my Adsin with teeth forceps. But you know what? We're on a mission trip and we're just gonna make it happen. Okay. There we are. Oh, come on. It's really hard to grasp with the rat tooth force it, but we're making it work. Okay, we grasp it again, going parallel in through the other side, adjusting and pulling my tail through. Our suture's getting smaller and smaller. Then we are doing two rotations around the needle driver, grasping the tail and crossing Kind of putting pressure because it's hard to um, keep the skin shut and closed down. Opposite side, one more turn, get it through there. Oh, this one actually closed really nicely. The other ones not so much because they're too far apart, but I will show you. Okay. Not shit all the way, but look at that last one. That last one's very pretty, very close together. Pretend the wound looks like so. All right, moving on to the next clip. Okay, I think I just lost footage of that first part of the video, but you start it just the same as the other one. So as you can see, I already, so this one we're doing a simple um, running stitch. So if you can see, this one's already closed. I put it through one side, didn't grab any fatty tissue, then readjusted, put it through the other side, did my uh, needle driver closure, and the needle is still attached. So we haven't cut anything. So now what we're gonna do is instead of crossing over, so right now my suture is on the left side of me. So we are going to go directly still underneath um, on the left side right below i'm gonna make new marks because like so just my needle so we went right directly underneath um the left side and now i'm going to adjust my needle like so so here is my suture on the left side. Now we're gonna bring it parallel to the right side. Bad surgeon, don't grab the needle with that. Stop when I was about to grab it with my fingers. And you wanna grab it with your forceps. Readjust your needle driver. I'm making sure, hold on. You don't wanna tie a knot in between, so. I just want to pull like so. So, yeah, this is a really good view. Ooh. Okay. So, we went here to here and did a knot. And then we stayed on this left-hand side and went and inserted through here, then here. So, now we're going to insert our next bite evenly spaced um, right underneath the other one on the right side. And go straight across like that. You have to hold tension on this because that's how you make okay so see if I explain this correctly so we're underneath on the right side and we are going to grab our needle opposite backhand way like this we're gonna get, grab a bite of tissue on the right hand side still underneath and then we will cross over parallel on the other side, left side. Like 
back. So, okay, and now there's my needle. And now we are going to go underneath on the left hand side still making sure my suture is not in the way or else it'll make a knot evenly spaced on my left hand side grabbing with my forceps straight down and yeah so you can grab it like this to do the other bite So the needle, as the loop goes down, do you see? My needle's out, there's no knot here. It's just making, let me show this up close. Just nice, pretty lines, like so. We're on our fourth one. Now we go directly, so now we're on the right side of the tissue. right side of the tissue so we're gonna load our needle go our one two three four spike down go on that side of the tissue so now we're above the tissue in our fifth spot we're gonna go parallel to the left straight across underneath Uh, my forcep, oh, come on. Okay. And then the same way on the left hand side, make sure you grab underneath so you don't knot your suture and above on, but now on the right side, which I guess I'm filming so it's the opposite, but you know what I mean. Okay, and then how you tie this is on the last suture, you leave a loop and you use the um, part that's attached to the needle and you grab that loop and you pull it through like so, nice and closed. And tension, come on. You do another loop grasp that loop of suture just like if it was a tail it is a tail it's just a loop you can see a loop that was one and then one more okay just like so and then now you grab all of them and we are going to cut nice pretty tails like so so, see how that last one looks like that? I mean, it'll be nicely closed, but my skin's getting a lot of holes in it. Just like so. Simple running stitch. See you in the next clip. Okay, so to do this um, subcuticular interrupted stitch and running stitch, I'm going to, I made another incision in my skin and I propped my video stuff on other things so you can see it better okay so my needle is loaded and you are going to go from deep to superficial and superficial to deep not quite at the apex but close to of the wound so what we're going to do is we're going to go deep deep to superficial like so it through and superficial straight across parallel to deep okay like so and now 
we are going to create a buried knot by going double across, same fashion as before to create a surgeon knot. Okay. Just gonna cut my tail a little bit. It's pretty long. I didn't mean to leave it that long, but can't really see pretty clear. It's this one right here. It's an absorbable suture. It's monofilament absorbable suture 4O. Okay. I'm going to reload my needle. And what you're going to do is grab the uh, the tissue so you can bring the needle underneath okay you're gonna bring it underneath the knot and through the apex of the wound you're gonna bring it up and this causes it to um, bury the knot when you pull so it kind of like looped it back in there and now you're going to continue it, but instead of going perpendicular, we're gonna go like this. So you're gonna grab a bite just in the dermis, like so. Okay. Coming out, readjusting, and you're going to go parallel on the other side. My computer was about to block out. Okay. Um, on the other side, behind, a little bit back from where my other bite came out. And bring it out. Like so and pull and we are just going to continue like that in the same fashion going straight underneath here having a bite tissue pulling it together going parallel on the opposite side grabbing a bite that went straight through Pulling it closed. Okay. And then you're going to go down parallel on that side, bringing it through. And straight parallel a little bit above from where my other bite came out. Pulling it through. See, it's kind of closing the skin there. And back to the other side, grabbing it through a little bit back from where my other one was, parallel. See, it's closing. As I pull it, it's closing up right there. Going to the other side. Okay, that came all the way to the epidermis. You don't want to do that. But I'm getting to the end of my wound. See, every time I pull, how you can see it's nice and closing up and there's nothing on the surface because it's all on the dermis. 
So this is a subcuticular continuous stitch. My last bite. I'm going to bring it to the apex of the wound. We have our loop again. gonna act like our tail and the knot is also going to be buried on this side like so and for these knots you cut really close to the knot so it's buried. Probably need some steri strips and some derma bond on this one <laughs> to close it up. But there's that one right there. Okay, so I am back. I had to go get Mooner Suture. So I deleted that video. We are starting the interrupted sub Q stitch again. This polypropylene has a lot of memory. Let me take it out. Okay, hopefully that'll work. Okay, so like I said in the previous clip, you go, you go uh, deep to superficial and superficial to deep. So you want to go deep. Deep to superficial. Not grabbing any fat, but in order for the sutures to stay in this skin, you kind of have to put it in there. Okay, but the con you get the concept. Okay, so then, and then you go from superficial, only in the dermis, to deep. Superficial. deep like so okay so then you pull it through leaving a little tail that I am then going to grab my needle driver parallel to the wound and we're going to do a couple loops when pull our tail like so. Gosh, this has a lot of memory. Hopefully this is working on video. Grab another loop. Grab a loop. And grab my tail. My suture tail. Okay. And one more. Okay, there you go. So when we cut, so when we do this type of stitch, we want to go as close to the knot as possible. So see, the knot is buried. Okay, so we are going to continue doing that same thing five more times to equal 10 throws. So load my needle driver. Remember to start deep. To superficial. Like so. Okay. Deep. Remember, evenly spaced. Deep to superficial. 
bring it out, leaving a little tail inside, floating up a little, going superficial. is lost. <laughs> what the heck? This is why I'm not a surgeon. Okay. <laughs> Yay! I found my needle. Okay. Boop. Coming out, 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 out. There we go. And then we're gonna do Parallel to the wound. This has so much memory. Holy moly. Like so. And you have your second one. But guess what? My suture came out. Ripped right through the skin. Okay, let's try this again. I'm going to take this out of here. Maybe that'll help. I don't know. We'll see. Then I can actually use my forceps because it's not too round. So, okay, deep. Deep to superficial. Okay, so my skin isn't working, but what you do is you load your needle, go from deep to superficial, bring it out, load it again, backhand it. You're going from superficial to deep, only within the dermis, then you bring it out, leaving a tail. Um, you are going to grab the suture, do an instrument tie, do a couple of um, throws, couple throws. And then you cut it really close to the knot and you bury it and you repeat that. My skin, my needle driver, and my forceps are not cooperating, but you repeat that five more times and that makes a buried knot like I did there. Can you see that knot? I don't know if it's focused, but you repeat that through to close the incision. Thank you so much for watching my videos. I will catch you next time when I'm a doctor.